and we're good to go. Hi, everyone. This is the February webinar presented by the Essex County Branch of Ontario Ancestors. My name is Linda Urquhart, and I'll be your host for tonight. Cindy Robichaud will be monitoring the questions. Thanks to Cindy for doing that. Sorry, I'm having trouble moving my screen. There we go. Before we start, we would like to acknowledge the Indigenous peoples of all the lands that we are on today, including the first inhabitants of Essex County. The Anishinaabe group, part of the Three Fires Confederacy, comprising the bands Potawatomi, Ottawa, and Ojibwa, or Chippewa, as well as the Huron, or Wendat, or Wyandotte bands. As family historians, we look for the stories of the men and women who came before us. We must acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past and consider how we can all move forward in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. Thanks for joining us. Just a reminder that this presentation is being recorded and will be added to the Essex County Branch YouTube channel. Also, everyone is muted and your camera is turned off during the presentation. Questions will be answered following the presentation. Just add your questions as we go along to the chat box, uh, which you'll find when you hover your mouse at the bottom of your screen and you'll see Cindy's name down there uh, with the word questions and you can put the questions to her. We will add a handout to the chat box near the end of the presentation. For those who are first time visitors to our webinars, we are one of the 35 branches or special interest groups of Ontario Ancestors, also known as the Ontario Genealogical Society, which is the largest member supported genealogical organization in Canada. It was founded in 1961 with its mission to encourage, bring together and assist those interested in the pursuit of family history and to preserve Ontario's genealogical heritage. To celebrate Family Day 2023, several branches and one of the special interest groups of Ontario Ancestors will be offering access to the members section of their websites for the Family Day weekend. And anyone can purchase a weekend access pass to the thousands of records in these members areas. Branches participating include the Essex, Kent and Lambton branches and more. A complete list can be found in the announcement on our Facebook page. Access will begin on Friday, February the 17th at 6 p.m. until Monday, February the 20th, also at 6 p.m. Access passes can be purchased from the marketplace on the main Ontario Ancestors website. Be sure to create yourself a free account on the site before you begin shopping. The cost of each access pass is $20 per branch or, or per special interest group. Detailed instructions can be found on our Facebook post. This is a great opportunity to check out thousands of resources available to assist you in your family history journey. Here's a quick list of the category buttons which hold tons of documents that we currently offer in the Essex County Branch Members Library. If you are not already a member, this Family Day Weekend Pass can be used to give you access to all of these materials for four days. I have starred the most popular areas, such as cemetery, church, families, newspaper, and obituary records, as well as the school button, which has generated a lot of interest with the addition of local school yearbooks. The Trails button contains a complete set of our newsletters since we began publishing them in, in 1980. You can see that we do offer a whole heap of genealogical treasures. We also hope that you'll join the Essex County Branch Facebook group, which has currently about 1,085 members. The group is very active in answering your questions and members are happy to assist you. Other links include our YouTube channel where you can review past presentations. And we always encourage you to interact with us by following us on Twitter and Instagram. 
Here are some of the upcoming webinars that you may find interesting. Ontario Ancestors has already started presenting a three-part Back to Basics series. The first session was held on February the 9th, but if you register for the series now, you will be able to view the recording of that session. The other two sessions are on February the 16th and the 23rd. All of them are at 7 p.m. There is a minimal cost for these sessions, but if you need an introduction to family history or just need a refresher, you will find these very valuable. The Lambton Branch has a drop-in session scheduled for Monday, February the 27th at 2 p.m. If you need help with your Lambton County research, join them for a chat. The link for this session can be found on the Lambton County Branch website. On Friday, March the 10th at 7 p.m., the Kent Branch presents online newspaper research tips and techniques for better results. You can register for this session at the Kent Branch site. And on Tuesday, March the 28th at 2 p.m., the Family Tree Maker user group con uh, continues to meet. Whether you are a new user of Family Tree Maker or an experienced pro, you will be amazed at the information you can discover with these group sessions. There is a link to register for this meeting on the Essex County Branch website. For other webinars, check out the events calendar at the Ontario Ancestors website. You can find it under the Education tab. The next webinar of the Essex County Branch is on Wednesday, March 15th at 7 p.m. Barton Breen, a member of the Essex Branch, will present the researching of his Irish ancestors from County Armagh, Ireland, to Comber here in Essex County. And for tonight's presentation, we have Jane Teskey, who will discuss her experiences using DNA in her genealogical research. Just a few words about Jane. Jane Teske was born Jane Cowan in Petrolia and has lived in Lambton County all her life. In 2000, she became and still is the webmaster for the Lambton County branch of Ontario Ancestors. Her spouse's family, the Teskes and Imasons, are from Essex and Kent County. While researching these families, she was able to uncover one mystery using DNA and is hoping that DNA will eventually solve the other. Jane has also helped others trying to find the identity of their birth parents. She has experienced that some of these cases can end up with a happy reunion, and some of them have turned out to be a big surprise. With that, I'll call on Jane to describe her experiences using DNA in her genealogical search. So Jane, you can take over now. Yeah, I'm just about to share screen. Hello, everybody. That should uh, take two seconds. Hopefully you can see that, Linda. Yes, good. Looks good. Okay. So when you're doing your DNA, we all get a little frustrated when we go on and we find out that they have no tree and they never respond to an email or a message. So before you do it, ask yourself why who, what, and where. Now, if you get a gift, I think all of us are genealogists on here, but if you give a gift to your grandmother, make sure you manage her account so you can add something to it because otherwise it sits there as empty DNA. Um, some of the basic rules when you're doing DNA is make sure you put up at least a small tree. Um, even if you just go back to your grandparents. By doing this, you're going to get more out of your through lines and you're going to get more hits. And then if people have, so they have your great grandfather in their tree as, as a cousin, well, they're going to get more. It's going to take you back even further if they have the sources. And so many women today are registering their DNA as their spouse's name. But I'm sorry, your DNA comes from your parents, not your spouse. You can't transfer DNA to each other. So make sure you do register under your maiden name. You can have your account under your married name, but your DNA should be under your maiden name. If you've done DNA, make sure you link it to a family tree if you don't have one. I have bought DNA kits for people and I manage them. And when I get the results, 
I link them to my main tree. So that way they're always linked to a tree, but they, they still have their own account. When you match, click on their name and then go to shared matches, especially if you don't know who that person is. Now I have a lot of Polish, so there's names I'll never know who they are. And if you click on share matches, it'll tell you who else you match. Well, that's automatically gonna tell you, well, it's my mother's family or my father's family, especially if your top matches come up right away. And I'm gonna let you read most of it yourself because it is there. But um, let's see if I can get to the next one. There's lots of questions to, oops, to be asked on Zoom tonight. Send them to Cindy and Linda's already gone over that. So I won't go over it again. If you want to reach me, you can reach me at the Lampton branch. I am the one who answers all the emails. We had a person last night with problems hearing. So I suggest you put on your CCC, which I think Megan has told you is in the chat line. To build a tree. On Ancestry, if you use their DNA kit, you may build a tree for free. You do not have to buy a membership to do that. And I believe you can go back about 3,000 people before you have to buy a tree. It might be five now, but it used to be three. Again, it, you know, make sure it's your, the female matches. I don't know why I have that slide. I went the wrong way. Okay, so I'm going to start with this one because remember I said, what if you run into someone you don't know? So the top person is my husband's uncle, Roger. The bottom person, we have no idea who it could have been. We do know now, but we didn't know. The next person down is my husband's first cousin on his mother's side. And below that is his first cousin on his father's side. And you can see the amount of CMA, or CM, so that it tells you about where they should fit. Now, with Sandra, we have common ancestries. If anybody else sees her name, except for me on the DNA chart, it's just going to be called Bambi. So when I seen Bammy, I thought, like, who the heck is this? And I went to email Sandra to ask her if she knew. And of course, right away, I seen in her email, her name was Bambi. <laughs> so then I knew who Sandra was. So I labeled it Sandra. And I used the, the, the buttons here, the colors. So it tells me which ones they're in. So this light pink here, it does stand for Imason. And then the green and the blue, that, that's all Mark's family. So we have Day and we have Grant and we have Teske, of course. Now, Carol Ann, she was looking for her father that raised her, home child family. And that's why she did her DNA. Well, lo and behold, she got a surprise because she is a half sister to my husband. And so are we surprised because we didn't know that was going to happen. In the handout, it explains that a whole lot more. So that's why I'm gonna let you read it in the handout. I, I wrote quite a story about it. If you go to where it breaks down and I'm in through lines right now, you can see that Grandpa Teske is here and Mark's father, his aunt, all these people are deceased, Violet, Olive and Roger. And so there it tells us where, well, yep, she's from the same person, exactly how even a grandson from Ann Ollie showed up, how they match. And tree lines only work well if you have some of these people in your tree. So I have his great grandfather, Francis, and I have Walter Bolton and Hugh because we had a researcher in England make a wonderful research before the internet was really even acting. Now on the Imason side, I made a book for my mother's 80th birthday. She had been sent a birth certificate for her mother when her mother went to get the old age pension. And this is who was said to be her mother's father on this birth certificate. And I remember putting the book all together and handing it out to her siblings at their 80th birthday. And then within a year, the 1901 census came out and this person's Fanny is still living in England in 1901. Well, our Fanny came to Canada in, 19, in 1893 as a home child. 
That's not her birth certificate the government sent. In fact, she doesn't have a birth certificate I can find. I can only find her in the workhouse with her mother when she was one year old. But there is people online and you'll see the screen that says potential under your through lines. That person is only there because one of Mark's cousin down this row at the bottom believes that book to be true. And when I said to her, well, who's the author? Well, Jane Kelsky is. I said, yeah, that's me. Would you throw it away? She won't. She believes it. It's absolutely true. So, you know, you're going to get these little hiccups. This is John Morris. So where Fanny was in the workhouse, her mother was also named Fanny. No marriage. She was a laundress. And just before Fanny was born, she used to go out and work in private people's homes. So assuming she got pregnant in the private person's home, she was sent back to the workhouse. Her father was Thomas and a very kind lady from the state helped me one year and said, I found Fanny with Fanny and I found her father. And between the two of us, we've got it back like six generations now. But through DNA, Thomas has a sister named Mary Ann. And I don't know why it shows up here twice because it's the same Mary Ann, but Dawn is there and under this one, there's three matches and it is the same person, but they're not from the same child. So Mary Ann had six children and they all come from different DNA, but they would not match. Like I said, DNA does not lie. They would not match if they weren't part of the family. So after six wrong Fanny Morrises, because there was seven or 10 of them born in that quarter of that year, um, 1887, I had no idea how to find which one was my mother's mother, my mother-in-law's mother. And before she died, I had promised I would find her. And so I kept going and now we have found her. But that's mostly because DNA, we know it's the right one. When you go to your site, you'll see the DNA story. And I'm gonna show you that in a few minutes. And then your matches. And then your through lines. So at the top, you can see that this says it is linked to me. If it was not linked to me, and there's many people who don't link it to somebody in the tree, then you don't get anything here. So you need to have that link. This is my brother. Now, I should go back. If you notice, I'm 46% Scottish. That's my dad's side. I'm 35% Eastern Europe, which is Polish and German, basically. But when we look at my brother, because he's male, he's 47% Scottish and 45% Poland. So, and then the four other regions, because he's following dad more than I am. And that's why I had him do his DNA. The other countries he hooks with is Ireland, 4%, but I only have 1% to Ireland. And it's, that's kind of silly because my grandpa Town that I lived with told me his family was Irish and his wife's family was all Scottish. Well, it turns out the Counts were in Scotland in the early 1700s. And when the king sent the people into Upper Ireland, the Protestants, they must have been some of the families is what I'm starting to find out just recently, especially with Tom's DNA. This is my mom and dad's on 23 and me, and you can see it looks a little bit different. According to this, Northwestern Europe, dad was 99%, and 98% of it is from Glasgow City and the county of Dublin, but it's mostly Glasgow City, because that is where all his mother's families were from in that area. And like I said, I haven't found where the towns are yet, but I'm assuming they must have been close. He has a little bit of German and French, but very little, and I think that's through a Zabitz line, and that's Z-A-V-I-T-Z. -Z. And they are German Mennonites that came up from the um, United States. So he does have that, and that's where that line would come from. My mother, who is, we couldn't get more Polish, both sides of her family came on the same ship from Poland to Canada in 1872. So, Again, there's a little bit of French German in there. I'm not quite sure where. 
Uh, I'm assuming this has to do with some of the Vikings going into Poland and Russia and Germany. It was mostly Pashka at that time. So that was a little bit of, of Russia and Germany and Poland all in one called Prashka. Um, the next map actually shows that there is four from Canada, four from Poland come to Canada. And then from my dad's, the Prushkins, um, there's 11 came and they went to Minnesota. And if the Polish didn't come to Renfrew County, they went to Minnesota. Some actually came to Renfrew County and they didn't like it. So they still went to Minnesota and the land there isn't much different than what it is up in Renfrew County, rocks, trees, and just, it was uninhabitable. They had to clear the roads. They had to build the railroad tracks and that's what they all did. They were lumberjacks or railroad men. Um, we have a cousin, Marilyn, that March, Tom matches by 28, well, 285 centimeters, but I only match her as 127 and she matches a count side. So we kind of know where she fits in, but I, she only has three people in her tree. So she really isn't giving me a lot of help yet. Um, and actually, no, she comes into the look of savage. And a man phoned here yesterday that I didn't hardly understand because still had a Polish accent. That is where she comes in is the Lucka Savage family. But again, because it's my mom's father's side, I'm assuming that's why Tom has more DNA. And I just remembered he called. It was a busy day yesterday. And so anyway, that is where she comes from. And I said that to him and he said, yeah, my grandma was a my grandma was a Lucka Savage, which was my grandpa's aunt. Um, sorry, I can't see. <laughs> I would like to show you online and I'm going to go online and show you. I use Ancestry a lot more, but I have done my DNA to my heritage, living DNA and 23andMe. Um, if you do it on Ancestry, you can upload it to Family Tree DNA, my heritage, living DNA and GEDmatch. So that's something you might want to do. Um, GEDmatch is completely free. Family Tree DNA Maker, I believe it's $38 or 35 US so that you can see your matches. You can upload it, but you don't see anything unless you pay that. My Heritage used to be free and I think it still is and Living DNA is free. But with Living DNA, I've been there four years. I have 450 matches and not one person has responded to an email or a message. So I kind of given up on it. Um, right now, you will see a lot of these are on sale. And in the handout, it'll tell you, I purchase Ancestry always through Amazon because there's no shipping fee. If you purchase it from the States in Canada, you are going to pay a 20 to $30 shipping fee. On, Ancest on Amazon, you'll get it overnight and no shipping fee. And it is on sale right now. And so is 23andMe and I think my heritage. So I am going to switch screens here. And I'm hoping I can do that without going out. Uh, can someone tell me if you can see? Oops. Yes, I see ethnicity inheritance screen. Yeah, the whole thing disappeared on me. So just a sec. Okay, so you can still see that? Yeah. Okay, so this is the old way. When we first did DNA, everybody was so worried about what lines you match. So I'm gonna click all for a minute. This is mine. And uh, so if I go maternal, which is the Polish side, you can see it says top line all the way down. I don't normally look at this, but some people might want to. And if you're more scientific than I am, you probably definitely want to. And paternal, so my dad's Scottish and Eastern Europe. No, Scottish mostly. Um, there's a purple, Norway. Again, the Vikings coming into um, Upper Scotland. But some of us didn't know that Scotland actually invaded Poland at one point, and that was in the 1600s. And so you may come across a few Scottish people in Poland. 
And I think I have one. So then I'm gonna go back to the regular page, hoping it'll work fine. So this is a map of my DNA and where it's from, and it includes both parents. And I like that on Ancestry because it does tell me um, what, where they are. So you know, you know where the Polish is, and it's much wider than just the Polish ones. But I want to go right out to the DNA. So again, like I said, it says hello, Jane. It tells you where you linked. Your DNA story is on the right box. The, sorry, the box on the left hand side. Um, in the middle is your matches and then your through line. So we're just gonna go into matches for me for a minute. And pretty easy, this beta program that they're using, I can tell that maternal is the top one. So it, usually it says parental one, but I knew it was maternal. So I actually, you can edit that and make it maternal because those are dark. Those are all my mom's Polish family and more. And then on my dad's side, the only thing I found interesting was there's no Counts listed. There's no Whitcrafts li listed or any Mitchells. So I'm kind of shocked there, but I guess unless somebody joins with that surname, it won't show. And maternal here, you can see it breaks down to other ones more. This is mostly Scottish. Then you have your unassigned ones. Now don't take great thoughts about that if they don't ever change, even though you've assigned them, because the pending update isn't going to happen for another month, because this is my mother's third cousin. This is another one that's my mother's third cousin. So, uh, you know, I've, I've matched most of them. I have given them all colors. Uh, I'm going to see if it'll just let me show that. My ancestry, no. Okay, now let's go back and see if it'll just show the un. Okay, so there's my brother at the top and you can see all the colors that he matches because he matches on both sides. I always make my groups and I add them and I add them to every person. Um, one of my cousins said, it's a great thing if you put a note too because sometimes you forget what a color means. So this is my mother's first cousin and Patrick lives up north. We know each other well. And, you know, you can scroll down and see where your matches are. Now I'm going to go to this lady here because you can see we match, but she has no tree. And, and that's where this other comes in to help. Shared matches. Because she has no tree, how am I ever going to figure out who she is? It actually took me four months. And only because I got a hold of a cousin did she remember where she came from. So she matches Patrick. So, okay, that's a Lucka Savage side. And all these blue ones, they're all Lucka Savage. So she's got a match. And this is a second cousin. So, oh, wait a sec here. She's got to be a Lucky Savage. Well, it turns out her grandmother is my grandfather's sister. And she was a canon when she was born. But what really threw me, the last name, August, my mother's sister married in August. And I thought, well, they're not blood. So how, how did we match? But like I said, it took me many days. And I have permission from these people that it shows because it doesn't give you any personal information. Um, I'm going to just switch to another person now. This is my brother, Tom. And you can see where it, it's at the top, it changes. We're going to go view matches. And his top match, if we were to go all matches, should be me. And it is. And I haven't added as many colors to my name. Again, it's the same with Patrick and stuff. But you know what? I scroll down a bit and I don't see any talents. No paternal matches. Well, I had him do it because I wanted a paternal match. So what I do is I put in the surname here. Do they have a cow in their family? And we should get three. Um, well, it's a moon that I'm looking for. And 
again, DNA doesn't lie. So the only way, oh, it's not going to come up. The only way it's going to show that we match is there's lots of moons, but I'm not seeing the one I want. Um, is because her father comes from Georgetown's line, and Georgetown. Um, he is a half sibling to my fourth great grandfather, which we didn't know until we matched them. And maybe it works better with me, but I do get the counts come up and I don't know why she doesn't, he doesn't. Because he should get more than I do. Uh, Chantel is another one, but Karen Count is one of those that if we go to her tree, You can see it here actually, George Cowan, and his father was Andrew Cowan, and his father was George Cowan. And it should go out to an Alexander and then another George Cowan. And that's where it showed me that George was actually a half, a half sibling to a great grandfather. So I use the trees sometimes, but not all the time. Um, I would more use the shared matches. Now, if this comes up, don't be shocked because it means she just hasn't got her great great grandpa George in her tree yet. So it's not linking together. I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to Tom again. Now I kind of wonder, you know, to go to through lines, do I go back out here? Most people do. But if you click this, It'll take you to your through lines. And we're going to just change it so we only see pretend dad's side and his mother. And, and you can follow it down. There's only one match to his grandpa, and that's me and him. And the same with his grandmother. But if we go down to, it's an unknown cow I have. That's a ways down, I guess. That's down farther than I thought. The one thing I don't like is when DNA companies change their program. And when they change the program, everything you think you know where it is moves. And so that is not showing. But Francis Mitchell. So my grandpa that came from Ireland, and he is a third great grandpa, he married... His father married a Mitchell, and the father's name was Mitchell, was Francis. So this gives me that Tom and I actually have some matches that also go to a Francis Mitchell. Now, none of them have returned their emails yet, but I'm hoping they do shortly. And Nancy Mitchell is John. Well, I had a John for a son, but I didn't know he married and who he married. So. That's a new one for us just in the last week or so. But I'm not going to find, because they've taken my unknown name count out again. Um, if we go to Henry Whitcraft, so William Count that came to Canada married a Whitcraft, and her father's name was Henry. And that's her, him here. But he also had a father named Henry. And so it goes out quite a ways to tell us that all the Whitcraft family, which we know, but if you go into Margaret Cowan, the story goes from a lady that lives, and she's like 98 now in Port Huron, that they disowned Eleanor Whitcraft, my third great grandmother, because she married her cousin. This could be why, because Margaret Cowan might be a sister to the father of John Count. Like I said, we don't have his name, but the years would fit. And uh, so far I can't find any siblings for her, but she could be a sister. So that is why, and if I click this down, you'll see that it, uh, there's Eleanor. So that is why they show up. If you have any green ones like this, that's potential. Um, I'm not sure about this. I haven't followed the McCoslins all the way back. 
Um, if you know Debbie McCoslam in Huron County, her husband is McCoslam. We're, we know we're cousins by the length of where he fits in the tree, but his DNA doesn't match me or my brother. So that is one way to do it. Then I'm going to go to the one with the hiccup. And I call it a hiccup because <laughs> nobody was prepared for this. So there is Mark's family and his top match. Um, if you see parent one, see I haven't changed it to maternal. This is the Imasons. And Cindy, that is part of your tree or part of your branch in Essex. This is where she fits in. But parent two, that is his father's side. But again, when we click this, you notice there's no Teske or Ruckel or Epcot, any of the names I know, well, Ascot's there, but any of the maiden names or the husband name, Teske, that goes all the way back, it doesn't show up there. And I don't know why, and Ancestry can't seem to answer me on that. You also have unassigned, but some people down here, if we had my cousin Barb's on here, it would actually say, or Mark's cousin, that uh, she, her and her father, her and her mother and father, are like six cousins or seven cousins, because they both go back to the Polish, Pal, Irish Palatines, which is quite interesting, actually. And again, if we go by ancestors, and we clear this just the one side. You can see that we have it quite a ways back. Again, this one I'm not sure about because it's on James Grant's side. So his grandfather married Nettie Grant. His father married her older sister, Hattie Grant, if you wanna think about that one for a minute. <laughs> yeah, not like your, your, your grandmother is your sister-in-law. <laughs> or your mother is your sister-in-law and your stepmother, but anyway. Um, and then that's a few of these are still grants. And so, like I said, I haven't got them all the way back. I'm more interested in the Teske family. And there's quite a few to research, as you can see. Um, and I probably will go back. I was just looking for the oldest, Jacob Teske. This is not Jacob the Elder, the first one of the generation but it's his son. And so um, a lady that was speaking for us last night also comes from this Jacob that was doing her talk. So, you know, you can follow it down. It tells you where you fit in. And again, you'll see that Roger, the uncle, first cousin, half sister and Mark, but Robert Hugh Teske, there's many, many generations and Daniel Teske. Now, we always thought Daniel was a sibling, but we can prove now that he is not a sibling. He is Hugh Teske's son. And the other Daniel, um, this is where the Shires come in. I guess it's not going to show you on this one. But there is another Daniel, and he is Jacob's brother Solomon's son. And we all, many Teske relatives had him as being single. Um, off to himself. So it would be Solomon, Jacob, and Daniel, but there wasn't. There was only Solomon and, Dan and Jacob. So Daniel goes to the Solomon side. So I'm just going to go back there for a minute. Um, we have lots of time. I wondered if there was questions. Hi, Jane. No questions so far, but there was a comment. Um, the quick access that you showed um, in, in the main screen that uh, allowed you to jump over to um, the through lines yep. and then filter by the maternal and the paternal, uh, filtering that out, that is a really great tip and a great um, quick access. Yeah, I, I didn't even find it until about three, four days ago because mm -hmm. I had always gone back to here and then went to through lines. And I'm thinking, you know, like when I'm in here, where does this take you? So you kind of need to do that. Location, I just started playing with yesterday afternoon, actually, because again, I want it to know more. So you can't break anything. So go, go, go investigate it. 
So when you click on this, it actually takes you places. But one thing I wanted to show you, if you don't put your location, this lady that they have a way up in northern Canada actually lives about 20 kilometers from me. So she should be down here, just past Sarnia. But because she didn't put her location as Lampton County even, she just put Canada, it puts her out of sync with everything. So if you're looking at you, you're kind of wondering, well, who the heck is that? And then if it didn't have her picture on, I wouldn't know. So where I am, she should be right beside me. Um, and the more you blow it up, I've got to figure that there it is. There is a plus sign, so you can blow it up quite a bit. It, it tells you where they are. All these people here really should be closer together. And then I haven't got into the states and looked at all. I was more interested in actually looking in Ireland and um, Poland. Now, on Ancestry, there isn't as many Polish DNA kits done as there is on genie.com or um, my heritage. Because to be on genie.com, you have to be a member of my heritage. And as a member of the Ontario, um, Ontario Ancestors, you actually get my heritage um, free program for the libraries, but that doesn't let you have genie.com. So you have to have and when I first started researching my mother's Polish family, they were all on genie.com and they had, you know, 50,000 people in their trees and they brought it right down to the ones that came to Canada. So they knew the siblings that came to Canada. And then there's about five of us. We have added from the siblings down to us for them. And so they actually a couple of the men translated all the Polish records into English. So they knew what they were doing. But uh, if we were to do that with, with even my brother now, if we went to his location, it should look pretty much the same. And it does. And you can see we have some down here in Australia, which we knew that my grandfather's sister's family Four of the boys left Canada with the oil searching people, and three of them went to Australia. So that that does lead you into some of their families. And if we go to Mark's location, again, you can get through this through um, the first page where it shows you your differences in your parents. And again, this person does not live away up there. They should be about here, near Sudbury, he's going to school. But it shows him way out in the boonies. And you can see that even Mark, you know, there's his German ones. It's probably the ones that didn't leave Germany that went here. Um, and Ken that researched all the testes, he wrote 10,000 testes around the world back in, say, 1990. And uh, but he said that the ones that went up through Poland weren't related. Well, now we're getting matches to some of those families that went through Poland and came to Ontario. So they are related, but he had no proof of that before DNA. So DNA is a good thing, but then when you find that half sibling, <laughs> it can be not the best. She is a lovely lady and I like her a lot. We talk a lot. Um, she goes away for the winter, but uh, we do keep in touch. I keep in touch with her children. But we have one sibling who is very upset. I'm the bad person. I shouldn't have done DNA. She, that, that can't have happened, but it did. And Carol's father married her mother about a month after they started dating. And she must have been already two months pregnant. But she was always listed as a preemie, an early baby. So, you know, it makes logic. And with Carol's mother's sister, she said, well, it kind of makes a lot of logic now. So you just never know what's going to happen out there. Um, when I come on and I'm looking for new people, I always click review new. So you'll see that it'll light up. 
There's no colors, so that means I haven't looked at them. And the first ones I want to see is common ancestries. And I keep them pretty much up to date, except for this week. That's been kind of weird. But I will probably go through these all in the next few days and find out who their common ancestry is. And that is one of your best, best things there is. But if you don't have a small tree, you're not going to get that. So, Cindy, this will be our family on that side. And it goes back to Joseph Imason, one of the first Imasons that came to Canada. And his son is Christopher, goes to Mark, and Mary Imason goes down to Heather. So, it's not too far out, as you can see. So, um, that is one thing I do a lot of. And then I will mark them in and I will message them. Um, on the tree in their site, though, what I do is sometimes put, I'm just going to go there. And I don't know if you're like me, but I don't like the homepage for ancestry anymore. So like Georgetown, I would have, here's the unknown town. Um, and he has a brother, George, from what we hit in DNA. Oh, wait a sec. I'm in the wrong one. My husband's, um, oh no, there's John and, and Margaret Mitchell. So that is where I descend from. And George. And yes, we did get another hit that this could be a half uncle, but we're not sure. I put him there, but I put unknown. My husband's aunt, who was at Imason, married into Walter Town's family. And they lived by what I found in records in Ireland. Um, four kilometers from this guy. So they could be brothers. So I put it up there with unknown father. But in my notes on his page, there's a special spot you can put notes you can see. It tells me that it's only a possibility. And then there was another Andrew Town, and I correspond a lot with him, his family descendants. And uh, I think there was, was only one child. So he married quite young. But anyway, he, um, and I don't have his, his wife's name, his descendants went down and they said, yeah, we match DNA. How? So unless one of these guys had an Andrew, I'm not quite sure if I got him in the right spot. But again, I use unknown count and unknown mother. I should say unknown mother. Yeah. And it goes back to unknown. But we're thinking this goes back to a William Town and a Margaret Watt but we can't prove it. And there's about 10 of us trying to, but we can't prove it yet. Um, research, I'm just gonna go to Mark's site. So helps to put pictures if you have them, put them. If you match a DNA, and that's what I was looking for, it should, they used to put a little thing on the picture and I see it's gone again because there should be a little squirrely thing here in the corner that says that he matches by DNA. Um, Ancestry just must have changed that this week because it was there last week. But you can see it goes back and here's our grants. And somewhere back there, I had found some DNA matches to Mary Jane Walding. And again, it's not going to show us because it should be over here. Um, the little squirrelies have disappeared. I guess everybody will have to check theirs if they have an ancestry tree and see if that happened to them too. Jane, I can see that you're on Cowan and Teske. Um, Stitching our family in time. So you're not seeing his whole, are you seeing his whole tree then? Maybe that's why you don't see the DNA. No, but Uncle Roger is right here, and it should have a squirrely. Oh. It used to be a little blue thing in the corner on the left-hand side, and that would say that was a DNA match, a direct match, because he's I did his DNA for him. Like, I, I gave him a kit, and he did it for me, and I sent it in. So there should be a squirrely right there, and there's not. Do you know what I mean? 
I just thought maybe you were because you've got that Cowan and Teske at the top. No, no, this, this is the only tree I have. I have oh. one tree and I have all my husband's side and I have all my side. So just flip, I just, just click on this and it'll flip you to my side. I don't have 10 trees like other people do. Well, see now my brother has a squirrely. See that little blue thing there? Yeah. Yeah, that should have been on all the ones that match Mark. And I don't know why it's not. And there's something here that's probably for DNA descendants and you can follow them back. But uh, yeah, no, it's not showing there, but it does show on Tom. And he has matched my tree and Uncle Roger, I manage his DNA. And so he is linked to my tree too. So it, it should have just showed, but it, it, it's not. Um, I think if I go in here, it's just going to tell me if I go to through, that'll take me to through line. See that little picture, it looks like a bunch of people. If you click that when you're in your tree, it'll take you to through lines. This is the little dot I was looking for that used to be on everybody that matched. But uh, so that is another way to get to your through line. So I'll do that again. Oh, no. Now I'm going to have to go back to the tree. Okay, so this little picture. I don't know if I can blow it up more for you. Um, see this little picture here? We'll, we'll go to Valentine, that's Grandpa Dargus. If you click that picture, it'll ask you if you want to go to through lines. And if you click through lines, it'll take you to through lines and show you your matches. So this is my mother and her mother. And then many of her mother's siblings have grandchildren who have matched. So it's weird. Here we all use the one way to get the through lines and, and there's three of them at least, if not more. I'm sure there's more if I was to dig around more. And you still have no questions? Nope, I'm not seeing any uh, other ones okay. right now, Jane. I did put the handout in the chat. Yep, though. I see it. And so basically that's what I was going over. I am a basic DNA person. I am not the scientific person. I'm not going to look at all, you know, which line you're on, why I have red hair or why this. I'm not, personally, I'm not interested in that. I'm only interested in finding family and true DNA and, and making sure it works. Um, I don't know if I can show you this one thing by ancestry. No, that's the wrong person. I want to go back to Mark's. We have one more home child that we cannot find. So this will take you back there. But if I click on this, it's going to show you that I manage these people's trees or they share them with me. I manage about six and the rest of them just share them with me. Um, but if I was to go to Mark, and I want to go to through lines, and you're going to see an Edith Day come up, Edith Elizabeth Day, we have eight matches, but we only have matches here in Canada, there is nothing going backwards. So um, Roy's mother and father were married when he when she had a daughter at two months old, she ran away with a hard man, which was Mr. Garton. Then he had 11 more children. A lot of the 11 children, people are doing their DNA. Um, there should be like three more in there, but they're not showing tonight. Maybe they've done a, another upgrade or something. But um, that is the only way we match these Gartons is because to Roy, they're half siblings. Um, but we can't find anything about her back. I wrote the ship she come with was Miss Ryan's party. And the note when, that was with her in England that came over said, 
mother deserted with five children and gave the two oldest up. Now the oldest boy did not come on the same ship, if it was a boy or a girl, with Edith. She came by herself on that ship. So maybe they had a job, maybe the older one was old enough to work in the workhouse, we don't know. But we can't find anything. And like Fanny, having you know 10 or 12 born in the same quarter, and that's from April to July, there's about seven Edith days. There is only one that is in a boarding school for um, like orphanage for a year before she sent to Canada. And she comes in 1891. She lives with a family and we have that all that information. Um, I wrote the government and got it. And then she marries Frances Teske who used to travel back and forth from Oxfield, Oxford County and Ingersoll area to Campbellfield where she was living with a family. And that must have been how they met. Um, whether he went there for market, for his father, whatever, we don't know. A lot of people on Ancestry have her with parents that live in Oxford, but her parents didn't come to Canada. It just happens that the people four doors down last name is Day but they're no relation. Um, I've actually contacted some of their family and uh, yeah, no, no relation. So we can't, she right now is lost. So all I can do is hope it took me 10, 12 years to find Fanny's family. And it's now been 10, 12 years for her. So if it's 20, 25, I'm hoping eventually that we'll find it. I know that Florence here, started to do genealogy when her mother was still living. And I have talked to, um, see Mr. Heather should be here too, but he's not, but I've talked to Ed Heather and his father wanted to, his mother wanted to do genealogy and Edith Day told them, no, just like, don't you dare. She wanted nothing to do with it. She wanted nobody to know where she come from. and. We found out just in the last year, the biggest reason is she never married Mr. Garton until 1932 in May, and he died August 1932. So all the children were illegitimate and we couldn't find their births. But if we go in and look for Hazel Irene Day, we do find their births registered. So DNA is hopefully gonna help us there. And I'm just going to close all those screens and stop sharing. I think I did it, right? Yep, that looks great. So Donna in the chat, she uh, mentions that she learned several shortcuts uh, moving between the screens. So that was very helpful for her. Um, and it's always great just to come away with a tip or two, no matter what presentation you attend. So you definitely gave us more than a tip or two. So thanks a lot. Well, and that's all I want from every one I go to, too. So I learned a lot from our speaker last night, but I've never looked into the Irish as much as she did. And I know we have some Irish people on here tonight because I told them I was going to tell the story of Mark's half sister. So, but thank you. And I hope everybody has the great rest of the evening and a good week. Linda. Sorry, I was muted. I was trying to talk. Uh, um, if there are no more questions, I wanted to thank Jane again for delivering this DNA presentation to our audience. I, I also found some surprises in my own DNA matches. Uh, that weren't with my direct family, but they were pretty close to my direct family. And I know that I, like I, I found that I had an ethical dilemma, like, okay, I have found this out. And because my mother had said something to me years ago that I kind of didn't really understand what she was saying, I, I could figure out who this person that matches us um, as a half cousin, a half first cousin, I could find I could find out who sh who that person was, but the family didn't know. 
So I have never really um, divulged the information. Uh, I did ask a couple of questions to uh, some of my other cousins who had taken their DNA to see if they had any uh, information about how much they shared DNA with this particular person. And I didn't really get responses, uh, so I just left it. So I think there there is an ethical an ethical thing that you have to go through. If, when you do find out something, who do you tell or do you tell anybody? Like, I don't know. It was, it was just very uncomfortable feeling. And I left it as not telling anybody. Now you had a situation where you have your own half sister. So it was directly related to you. I could understand you wanting to tell your other siblings. But I, I told Mark. And he ran into his sister uptown, one of his sisters, Sharon, who just passed away. And she said, are you kidding me? Well, I guess, I guess, when do we meet her? Yeah. Um, and and I, I told me, he told Neil and Donna, and I had them all at my house, along with Uncle Roger. And I have helped people find their biological parents. And... In some cases, that when they did contact their biological parent, there was no uh, no interest in, you know, developing any kind of a relationship or meeting. Or it was a very oh. negative experience for for that person who was trying to find their biological parent to to have to deal with that. You see these shows on long lost family and things like that, where they usually are quite happy to find the person that's looking for them, but I don't think that's like 100% of the time that you're going to find that. Um, years ago, without DNA, a gentleman came to me through the Lampton branch and said, you can have my father's funeral home records if you help me figure out what this means. And he gave me a piece of paper, and it said his adopted son and his father's obit. And he says, do you think I'm adopted? Like, here's a picture of dad. I look just like him. I said, yeah, you do. But wait a sec. Your mother was 52 when you were born. She was 10 years older than your husband. And I said, well, hmm, let me think on it for a day. <laughs> so then I got thinking about it. And I said, you know what? We're going to order your long form birth certificate. And we did. And his mother wasn't his mother. In fact, what had happened is his uh, biological grandmother was their housekeeper and helped work for the funeral home and the furniture store that they had in Oil Springs. And she made arrangements for her daughter to have a child for his father. Hmm. And he would send her away to a school for the year in Hamilton, actually and get her the schooling, extra schooling that she wouldn't get here in Lampton if she had this child. When the child was born, he would arrange to pick it up and bring it home and his wife was all okay with it. And there was only one way in 1930s that you could have a child. So all that happened. And we told him, we found out who his father was or who his mother was and then I got looking into her history. Well, it happens that his grandmother sat behind them in church all the time with these little kids. Well, those little kids were his half sibling, three of them. So one of them were married to somebody that used to work in Sarnia, and I just started making some phone calls for him. And I got his wife on the, the, the guy that I worked with, his wife, and I said, Did you know that one of the the girls from the Booth Roy family had a child out of wedlock. And she said, no. Do I have another cousin? Oh, which one? Can I, can I meet him? Because I had said a boy. And I said, well, it was Muriel. Well, that was my mother. I have a brother. Oh, she started screaming in joy. We got there. She was in tears, hugging and kissing him. Never met him before. And didn't even have any proof from me talking on the phone. So my husband and I drove him, him and his girlfriend down there because he's a bit handicapped with his leg. And it was a too fast to birth. So some things, one side of his body's a little bit problems to drive that far. 
And so we took him down there and his half brother was the only ones that had questions. And I put together all his birth certificate information and everything and handed it to him. And he looked at him and he said, well, you're gonna have the best younger brother you've ever had in your life. Hmm. And they have been as close as you can't believe. Um, a cousin to my mother had a child out of wedlock in the States. And the person matched some of that, that, that lady that's up in Northern Ontario matches her closer than me. So I called her and said, do you know if your mother or her sisters had any of their kids had a child out of wedlock? She said, oh yeah, so-and-so did. But they married after they got out of high school and they did two years of college and then they got married. And I think they looked for that baby. It was a girl. I said, yeah, she's contacted me. Oh, well, can I have her contact? I said, yes. She said, give you whatever. Well, her mother died of COVID two years ago, Christmas. And she didn't meet her father until a month later. But she has three full siblings. And the siblings are best friends. You never know what's going to happen. But, you know, I always say at least make the opportunity. Um, they can either say, no, I'm not interested in meeting you. I want nothing to do. You know, like there was a reason. This is what happened. But at least give them the opportunity. It's, it's my belief. And I think right. I've helped 10 people now. And I think that's what we would have to <clears throat> be uh, sure of, that if we are going to help somebody analyzing their DNA uh, results, that we have to be right up front and say, okay, I'm. are you sure you want to find out everything that I find out? Or do you just want to, you know, find out the things that you thought were going to happen? I mean, it's DNA does not lie, which is the the uh, title of your presentation and uh so if they know up front and if they agree and if you take your dna you should know that too that you might uncover things that surprise you about your own family and so just have that in mind that you're open to that before you before you go go this route but anyway we're out of time yep. so i'm gonna close it up now and uh We'll have to end the session, but we do hope we see you all on March the 15th, just in time to pre prepare for our Irish celebrations on St. Patrick's Day. So good night to everybody.